There was this farmer in Africa who was very, very poor. And when this diamond rush, this rush that started to go through Africa about diamonds, that if you find a diamond or you find diamonds, you become very rich, it hit his village. People start bringing presentations that you, the only thing you need in your life is to find the diamonds. When you find diamonds, you're set for the rest of your life. And so he sold his farm, moved his family to another city. They located in some small ghetto apartment. And he started going to India and other places to look for diamonds. He went to India, didn't find them, went to other places, didn't find those diamonds and then decided to go to uh, somewhere here in Ecuador to look for diamonds, didn't find them and spent about 10 years of this journey, didn't find the diamonds, felt so embarrassed that he didn't find the diamonds that he let his family down, decided to commit suicide, threw himself in the river and killed himself. The guy he sold the farm to bought his farm 10 years prior to this and one day was working on the farm with the oxen, and the cows and all of the good stuff. And by a little brook in that farm, he found a big stone. Nothing particular about that stone. There was plenty of them laying there. Just, just a big stone. He brought it inside of his house. He placed it on by the fireplace. Just, just a stone. And a local clergy, a local pastor was walking by. Decided to come for a tea. They were drinking tea. And the pastor noticed the stone by a fireplace. And he said, where did you get that? He said, that? The stone? He said, yes, that, that stone. He says, oh, in my backyard. And the pastor said, before I was a pastor, I was a jeweler. I worked on rare stones, very expensive stones. He took that stone, cleared some stuff off, and he says, this is the rarest diamond in the world. The guy, the farmer took him back in the backyard and he said, listen, the whole backyard is full of these diamonds. Today, it's known as the largest diamond mine in the world, Kimberly Diamond Mine in Africa. The man who sold the farm had literally wealth to millions of generations under his feet went looking for something that was already within his reach and eventually ended his life never finding it while it was right in front of his nose. Now I understand, it's, you may say inspirational story, whether it's true or not, they say it's true, but you know, I don't have a gold mine, diamond mine in my backyard. Trust me, I've tried it tested it. Every stone that is there is bought from the place in here for cheap stones are bought on discount. That's all. But I want to assure you of something tonight. You actually have something greater than a diamond mine within your reach. You have someone who created the diamonds. His name is the Holy Spirit. And Bible says he doesn't live in your backyard. He lives inside of you. He created the galaxies, He created the universe and He lives inside of you. And I believe that many of us as Christians, especially tonight, I want to speak to those of us tongue speaking, you know, like the shake and bake and all the good stuff. Most of us who many times what we're really searching for is can be found in the person of the Holy Spirit. And the person of the Holy Spirit has been reduced to many people as tongues, flame a good experience instead of a real authentic relationship with him if you have your bible would you go with me to book of acts chapter 3 verses 2 and down open your phone please to a bible app i said when i say open your bibles i realize most of you don't carry your bible so book of acts chapter 3 and verses 2 and a certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried somebody say carried whom they laid daily at the gate. Somebody say gate. At, does everybody hear? Does everybody say gate. Okay, very good. Thank you. They, they laid at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask, somebody say ask, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. And we'll just pause on that. You know the story. So this is very interesting story because it talks about a man who had legs, okay, but he didn't use them. He didn't walk in those legs. Instead, 
he was carried by other people and they never brought him inside of the church they laid him at the gate of the temple where the bible says he wasn't worshiping there he wasn't setting the atmosphere he was just simply begging for some money okay now legs come how many of you you were born with legs simple how many of you you got them as add-on after you learned a few tricks or learned the language nobody everybody in here got your legs on the day of your birth for free <laughs> hallelujah you didn't have to pay for them you're not renting them it's not like an iPhone that two years later stops working you need to buy a new one it came perfect at the day of your birth but how many of you you walked out of your mother's womb nobody so you got your legs with your birth but you didn't learn to walk with your birth it took us years to learn how to walk with the legs we've been given at our birth yes no okay most of you you don't I, I don't judge you because you don't remember we don't remember but it took us a while to learn how to walk in the legs we've been given at our birth now this man we read about unfortunately he didn't have a problem with laziness or learning how to walk he actually had an infirmity he had a physical problem in which he could not walk in those legs we as Christians when we get saved we also at the day of our salvation get something the Holy Spirit he comes as a package when you get saved even if you come asking for salvation God right away gives you the Holy Spirit you're like God get me out of hell and God says great let me put the Holy Spirit there too you're coming in there your boyfriend broke up with you your heart is shattered and broken you just need somebody to love you God says yeah let me pour some love and the Holy Ghost as well maybe you're coming in you're on drugs and you are in alcohol or your life is broken you got demons tormenting you at night stuff moving in your room you're coming you say God I just I just need you to to save me God saves you and then he also gives you the Holy Spirit you don't get the Holy Spirit when you speak in tongues you get the Holy Spirit when you give your life to Jesus Christ come on somebody but walking in the Holy Spirit many people don't learn and they got like legs they got the Holy Ghost at the day of their salvation but living in the Holy Spirit they are not exercising that it's like a lame man having the Holy Spirit but the Holy Spirit doesn't have me having the Holy Spirit but not knowing him but not living in him not having intimacy with him not having a relationship with him you may say what difference does it make I am saved I'm going to heaven well three things I know about person who has the Holy Spirit but doesn't live in the Holy Spirit one you don't come to church with someone someone brings you it's always some alternative reason for which you come to church the lame man did not come to the temple he was brought to the temple people who have the Holy Spirit but don't live in the Holy Spirit they constantly get brought to church they need to be reminded that there is church they need to be bribed that there is church they need to be lured into church they need to have girls in the church they need to have this and that why because they can't come and if they do they never bring anybody the second thing I know about people who have the Holy Spirit but don't live in the Holy Spirit is this their mind is at the gate but their body is on the pew even right now their mind is on Facebook snapchat someone else their mind is always distracted and the blame of course it's a preacher preacher sermon is boring it's crazy because your neighbor is getting a revelation and you're bored and dead to death why because lame <laughs> it's all good we're home If your mind is at the gate and your body is at the seat I'm not saying you don't have the Holy Spirit perhaps Holy Spirit doesn't have you 
perhaps you're not walking in the Holy Spirit perhaps the Holy Spirit is like a spare tire it's the legs that don't carry you you only carry them and the third thing that I know about people who have the Holy Spirit but don't live in him is they beg they beg God for things that are always secondary show me your prayer requests and I can tell you where your relationship with the Holy Spirit stands because after the legs started to walk this man who still had no money this man who still had no wife probably this man who still had no kids this man who still had no house this man was the Bible says after his legs started to walk he got inside not outside inside he was no longer brought now other people came to Christ because of his miracle and the Bible says he was leaping praising God which tells me whatever he was begging for was not the most important in his life because what Peter gave him was most important he activated the legs that he had my desire today is not to give you anything but hopefully activate something you already have maybe you're looking for diamonds outside of what you already have what you already have as a Christian is you have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is a bottomless wealth he's a bottomless well of treasure life love and light Holy Spirit is really everything you need he's more important than a boyfriend he's more important than a civic he's more important than more followers on Instagram he's more important than removing the pimples in your forehead he's more important than getting friends he's even more important than your school come on you're clapping like you need deliverance the Holy Spirit in the Holy Spirit is the solution for everything and without the Holy Spirit we always focus on the secondary things like money like cars like relationships these things are important but they're not the most important when you discover a relationship with the Holy Spirit when you discover intimacy with the Holy Spirit you recognize these things that you used to pray about they begin to sometimes work themselves out slowly but surely the greatest need that you have and I have as an individual person is not just to have the Holy Spirit that's already been given to me but now to develop an intimacy to develop a relationship with this person we call the Holy Spirit amen, amen. if you have your Bible let's go to a second verse that I want to read to us building on what I've just mentioned Matthew chapter 3 verse 16 we will look at Jesus and for just a few moments I want to share with you practically on how to cultivate the intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 3 verse 16. When he had been baptized Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were open to him and he saw the Spirit descending like a dove aligning on him. Suddenly a voice came from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased chapter 4 verse 1 then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterwards he was hungry I always was confused with this verse he was hungry after 40 days I get hungry before 40 days it's like we're declaring a fast the word fast makes me hungry and so this is like it's it's the Bible so we believe it but I, it's Jesus definitely he was holy and so he was hungry after that the temperature came and tarara -ta, in verse 4 it says Jesus says it is written so he he overcomes the devil by by the word of God I want to share with you just in the conclusion of this message uh, just the practical three simple tips on how to activate that relationship with the Holy Spirit the first one is you can't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit if you don't see him as a person the Holy Spirit cannot be an experience a power a force tongues dove fire lightning oil shaking crying baking or any other charismatic Pentecostal experience 
Holy Spirit does these things but the Holy Spirit himself is a person. I remember hearing, uh, you know, people come from mission trip and especially more traditional Pentecostal churches and they, you know, people would testify say, hey, I've been to a mission trip. I just want to give God the glory. My Holy Spirit learned a few new words. And I was like, wow, didn't know the Holy Spirit gets version two. <laughs> and I understand what they meant is their tongues, the gift of tongues expanded, but the Holy Spirit didn't learn anything on the mission trip. You learn something and the gift expanded, but the Holy Spirit never expands. The Holy Spirit is not tongues. About a, a year ago, uh, my cousin, uh, my friend Ilya uh, blessed me with this iPad. I gave my iPad away and then he, he blessed me with a newer one, nicer one. Let me tell you something about this iPad is not Ilya. This iPad, now for example, if me and Ilya don't do good no more, I will still have his iPad. He's not going to take his iPad back. This iPad is his gift, but he is my friend. Tongues is a gift, but the Holy Spirit wants to be your friend. And many people have an iPad and they forgot the number to the person who gave them their iPad. And you can automatically still speak in tongues, but a Mazda, Shura, but a Honda, every service and actually not live in the Holy Spirit. And still actually get drunk on the weekend, smoke weed, sleep with your girlfriend and do all of that and still speak in tongues. Why? Because tongues is a gift. It's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the person and he is bigger than the gift. My friend Ilya is not in this iPad and he is bigger than this iPad. He is my friend. He's a human being. Are you with me? You know when I was younger I, I had a, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit at a very young age you know 15 or 16 years of age and that's all that I knew there was to the Holy Spirit and until recently about four years ago that the reality that the Holy Spirit is a person penetrated my life and it started to change things slowly but surely. But one of the things that I struggled is the fact that when I see the Father I think of the Father because I have an amazing dad. It's easy for me to connect God the Father to my father because he was amazing. He's still amazing. Great dad. When I think of Jesus, I saw Jesus movies. Jim Caviezel. Great Jesus. I see Hollywood made movies and so I imagine a guy with a beard. I imagine a Jewish man, a long rope, nice guy. Nails, you know, there's holes in his wrist. And so when I see Jesus, when I say Jesus, I don't think of a lamb. I think of a, of a being. And my problem was this, is when I say the Spirit, my mind would always go cloud, wind, fire. And it was just like, which image do I choose today? Okay, the fire today because I want it hot. The wind, blow, blow, deep rivers, deep rivers. And then always, and I said, when I, was, when I was researching, when I was searching for this, and I said, Lord, why did you not give the Holy Spirit a body? It would have been so much easier for us to fellowship with him and I heard this prompting in my heart that the Lord replied back and said the Holy Spirit has a body it's just he chose yours. Amen. Jesus chose the Jewish body I chose the fathers the Holy Spirit when he came choosing the body he says you know what let's not create any new ones let me just take his hers and theirs the Holy Spirit is no less a person than Jesus just because he doesn't have a Jewish body. Look in the mirror. That is his body. He is a person. You know, I, I grew up in the Russian church and every Russian church typically ended with these words. And those of you who don't speak Russian, just, just hang in there for a second. I blagodat. Иисуса Христа и любовь Бога Отца и общение Святого Духа да пребудет сима вами. Amen. By the time that by the time it got to благодать общение, my heart was racing. My heart was joyful. I was already thinking about пельмени, фанта, спрайт that we're gonna be eating. I was like, God, thank you за общение с Духа Святого. Because this means service is ending. How many of you, how many of you, that was the first verse that you learned in life? As a baby, you like literally didn't speak Russian. But that verse, my memory, because that verse came, you knew it is finished. This long eternal service has come to an end. We are free indeed. Right? Only four years ago, this verse became so real to me. 
I know about the love of the Father. I heard tons, tons of sermons preached on myself. About the grace of Jesus, I know how powerful that is. But I will be very honest with you. Up to four years ago, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit fellowships, listen, not just talks and guides and instructs and leads and corrects and convicts, fellowships with me the same way the father loves me jesus gives me grace and the holy spirit's gift to me is not grace and love he says my gift to you is fellowship i want to fellowship with you now you can't fellowship one way you can't fellowship you just talk 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 talk, talk. that's not fellowship that's <laughs> that's just talking and some of you have those friends like well, let's hang out <laughs> or let's go to the home group and you realize they speak 99 percent so what you guys think about that but by the way let me say one more thing that's not fellowship that's that's talking that's constant the holy spirit didn't come to just talk and talk he says i want fellowship and since he's the one on earth jesus took a hike to heaven the father is in heaven and the holy spirit is here now and that's what he wants to do i believe that we need to unwrap and discover that listen his gift what he desires to give us is fellowship yes I, I don't think we need to pray to the Holy Spirit though we can because he is God but but we sh you shouldn't go a day without fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit he wants to talk to you no no, no I'm not talking about convict you because when we think of the Holy Spirit we're like yeah trust me Holy Spirit enough I got it for the next three weeks I, I know what I need to work on I'm not saying convict the Bible doesn't say to just convict. I'm not talking about just to teach. His anointed teaches us. I'm not just talking about to lead us. The Spirit leads us. I'm talking about fellowship. It's kind of like what the husband does with the wife. It's, it's what dad does with kids. It's what you do with friends. It's when you fellowship. You feel that closeness. You feel that sense of unity with Him. You feel the sense of oneness with Him. You know, you can actually have the Holy Spirit and not be close to the Holy Spirit. For those of you who are single right now you have no idea what i just what, you believe me and thank you for that but you will really really believe me when you get married you can literally be in one bed together and every husband is terrified of these words i feel like we're not close i'm like that's pretty close <laughs> i remember a few weeks ago my wife did that you know we're She's, you know, kind of coming up to me and I'm tired already. She's like, you know, I feel like we're so apart. And I was like, excuse me? I was like, where are you now? Because I think you, I see you here. And of course, every woman, that's not what she means. She doesn't mean physically. We're still married. I'm, I'm like, I'm not beating you. I'm not doing any bad. I'm not hurting you. You got your well-fed. You got a roof over your head. Your car has gas. It's clean. Everything is fine. Woman, what, leave me alone. What, are you, what else do you want from me? But the woman does not just want your money. She doesn't just want the car and the house. He doesn't, doesn't. What one thing that marriage requires is that she wants your attention. And your affection you can give her everything but if you don't give attention and affection listen she feels million miles away though you're in the same car and in the same bed exactly the same as with the Holy Spirit you can have him right here but honestly be a million miles away because your attention is not there and secondly your affection is not there the Holy Spirit waits to be wanted he longs for your affection. I remember one time when I was struggling in my prayer life and we have a morning prayers and I would come regularly, a, tra a tra tradition and, and a discipline that I continue to develop and maintain in my life. And, and one time I remember I came and I kind of fell asleep and I struggled too because when I would fall asleep it was very early hours and, and I struggled with it. I felt guilty for it. I was like, man, what, what good does it do that I sleep here? I'd rather sleep at home. And I heard what Bill Johnson said something that really changed me in this. And Bill Johnson said this, he said, I don't judge my kids for falling asleep in my lap. And after that, my God, I was like, man, Lord, I'll be sleeping in your house all the time. <laughs> but the part that touched me is that when I came to, in prayer, and I just, I was a very honest conversation. I said, Jesus, you know that right now, um, I'm not really feeling like being here. I am tired. Um, I feel like you don't really care. I feel like I'm not connecting and it's been an hour. You're not pressing in. I played every song that you like and I like and I couldn't couldn't get anything going and Jesus we kind of know that this has been happening for the last two weeks 
I feel completely that this is useless. Why don't I just tomorrow take a break? You get a break from me. I get a break from you. Maybe this will get it to work. And I felt something the Holy Spirit prompted in my heart that honestly changed my prayer. And he said, you come here because you claim to love my presence. But in reality, I love your presence more than you love mine. And the next thought that came into my mind that started to change me is said, let me enjoy your presence. Just your presence. And it hit me, the fact the Bible says God loves us more than we love Him. Which means that whatever the, the idea that you have how much you love God, I'm going to tell you something, it pales in comparison with how much God enjoys you. You. The you, you don't like. That you. God loves. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit begins when you know the Holy Spirit is not it. He's not a force. He's a person. Amen. Are you with me? Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. The second thought I want to share is that relationship with the Holy Spirit cannot go higher than our obedience to His voice relationship with the Holy Spirit cannot go higher than our obedience to His voice. We see that Jesus got led by the Holy Spirit. When we are led by the Holy Spirit, we begin to raise the relationship with the Holy Spirit to a higher levels. You can't go higher in your relationship with the Holy Spirit if you don't go higher in your obedience. Your obedience is the thing that determines how high your relationship goes. You can just randomly start fasting and praying but if you're not obedient, if the Holy Spirit is leading you to give finances, if He's leading you to forgive, if He's leading you to ask for an apology, if He's leading you to cut some things off and you're there fasting, you're like Saul who's trying to make up with sacrifices what he undid with disobedience. It's not sacrifice that increases, it's your obedience and because obedience is our sacrifice. But I want you to see something here, is that Jesus is led by the Holy Spirit after He was filled with Holy Spirit. I found in my personal life and maybe you will see the same connection in yours, is that instead of focusing on the leading of the Holy Spirit, we should be focused on being filled with Holy Spirit because whatever you're filled with will lead your life. You don't have to focus on hearing God fill yourself with him and you will start thinking like God that even if it's not God you will not get misguided how do you get filled with God the Bible says be filled with Holy Spirit it's interesting because it doesn't say wait for the Holy Spirit to fill you because in the more Pentecostal circles it was more of like wait for the right moment there's the right prayer your hands up you know you're kind of praying in tongues praying you kind of get yourself worked up worked up boom it takes over and then you go for 40 minutes you're praying you're praying and it's so awesome it's so hot so beautiful you're like my god I got filled with the Holy Ghost that's good that's very very good but the Bible says be filled with Holy Spirit it means you fill yourself with the Holy Spirit it means it's not Holy Spirit's job, it's yours. And then it says this, do not be drunk with wine. It compares the filling of the Holy Spirit to being filled with alcohol. Now, I understand nobody here drinks alcohol. Amen? Hallelujah. But we used to, for those of us, some of us BC days, we used to drink. Jack Daniels was the friend on Friday night. Now, how do people get drunk in the world? You don't just sit there on Friday night, open the book of the Bible to Leviticus and out of nowhere, tequila breaks out of the store, runs through the highway, finds your address out of all the addresses, intrudes through the front door. You're there sitting, reading Leviticus. It opens up your mouth, gets inside of your mouth and says, you're drunk. How many of you ever had that experience happen to you? If you did, you were high on drugs. <laughs> Probably heroin or something else because that does not happen. If you want to get drunk, you don't read Leviticus. You get out of your house and you look for a bar. But you don't get drunk by showing up at the bar because I've been to many restaurants that had bars and I never got drunk. You don't just show up to a bar. You come up to a bar and you say, hey, can I get that, that and that? And even then you don't get drunk. You have to get the glass, open up your big mouth. 
you go again again and again and then you start feeling different if you were shy you feel not shy if you're quiet you feel loud if you're strong you feel wobbly then you get in the car of course you get a DUI you end up in jail every all the bad stuff happens now exactly the same thing happens with the Holy Spirit you want to be filled with Holy Spirit church is a Christian bar with the pastor offers the drinks the worship leader every song just please take it the only thing we do is we come in church and we say I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost you're literally this close to the presence of the power of the Holy Ghost but the problem is this is your mouth is zipped you get wet but not filled as they were singing today as they sing every Sunday night if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit you have to learn this is you have to learn to open your mouth go to places and people where the Holy Spirit is moving Jesus wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit at home it was with John and at the Jordan People who walk around and say simply, I don't need the church, I don't need the preaching, I don't need the worship. Listen, you need that stuff. Why? Because, and not just that stuff. Don't come and spectate. Don't come and watch. Open your mouth. Because when you open it outside of the church, high chance you'll get in trouble. Open it inside of the chair to the church, high chance you'll get out of trouble. Many of us, that's our problem. We can't keep it shut outside of the church but inside of the church is like a duct tape you literally walk in you can literally verbal diarrhea outside of the church no, 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 no. get inside of the church and you can't pull a word out of your mouth you can't pull holy out of your mouth you can't put hallelujah you can't put worship and thanksgiving and prayer and tongues and all of this stuff and you may say but i don't feel it nobody goes to the bar and waits for a feeling before they start drinking you drink it so you start feeling People come to church and say, I don't feel it. Are you crazy? You feel yourself with Holy Spirit and then you feel it. It's not the other way around. And the reason why Christians don't drink the Holy Spirit, don't fill themselves, and guess what they do? They fill themselves with alcohol instead. They fill themselves with social media. They fill themselves with all kinds of junk things. Why? Because they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. I like what Reverend Hill said. He says, alcohol is the devil's substitute for being filled with the Holy Spirit weed social media even the good things like sugar and other stuff many people begin to crave all of that in their life why because in the reality there is a void that only holy spirit can fill and when you have that void even if you have the holy spirit even if you come to the christian church even if you come there but you just simply sit on the side your life will still be empty because your life gets full when you get filled with the holy spirit and out of that comes the leading it's quickly how it happens you're literally filling yourself with the Holy Spirit you're filling yourself with the presence of God and next thing that happens you start getting ideas to give something you start getting ideas to invite somebody you start getting ideas to bless somebody you start getting ideas to open something to open a home group to open a prayer group you start getting ideas you start getting words of knowledge you start getting images and pictures the Holy Spirit always leads a full person not an empty person an empty person is a bait for the devil but a full person is usable by the Holy Spirit and therefore like my desire and my personal goal is this I don't want to look for words of knowledge prophetic words for myself I just want to be filled because when you filled, you can find anything there in the Holy Ghost when the Holy Spirit fills your words of knowledge come in when the Holy Spirit fills your stuff comes in you're like oh my god I can't believe this is real because God is real and he can use you just like that can somebody say amen, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. I remember in, uh, in one of our services I had um, during worship and I love worship time and now I really, really treasure worship time and then many times I literally zone out during worship, lay on the floor or kneel on the floor because my goal is to let my cup be full and it's so hard as a pastor because you have 20 million things that are running in the church, things is broken, people texting you this stuff and then people come up with prophetic words in the middle of the service, they need the time, you know there's so much stuff that's going on in the service many times and to be able to shut everything down, literally forget that the camera is broken and they just restarted the live stream and that toilet is flooding in and to literally sacrifice everything for one thing holy spirit if you don't show up 
all the good stuff in the toilet is pathetically pointless. <laughs> Nothing matters if you don't show up. And to fill myself with the Holy Spirit and after that, and this is what I started to first experience because I didn't hear words of knowledge and all this stuff. I prayed for that, asked for that. But when I started to focus on being filled with Holy Spirit, I started to see images. At first I thought this was crazy. I remember uh, hearing a word, gastritis, just during worship. As I was just filling myself with the Holy Spirit, at the end of the service, toward prayer, I remember I released the word that says, somebody is here, has gastritis, and I think God wants to heal you. And so I just took a step of faith. Turns out there was a lady standing on the, on the back row and she was a visitor and she had got gastritis for I think seven or eight years. And when she heard that word, she said her stomach caught fire, but she actually didn't stay for prayer. She walked out, got in her car. She wasn't a uh, believer. She didn't know what to do with it. And so she walked out, got in her car. She said her stomach was still burning and she went back home, started eating some stuff and two weeks later sends us a check with a thank you note saying, hey, uh, tell the, the guy who was talking that uh, whatever he said, uh, I don't have any more gastritis. Completely healed. Recently, uh, there was during worship we had some guests and so uh, I wanted you know they, they minister in prophetic and ta -da -da. and so but during worship I just have this picture in my mind I see a, a person and they have this red spot over here and I have this sense of knowing that somebody has a spasm they're watching a live stream they have a spasm and they can't turn their back or, or they can't turn their neck and so and I kind of feel bad because you know we already have the guests and I'm like I don't want to you know hear give words because I'm literally just learning to hear the Holy Spirit more and so but I'm like you know what it's our church I can do what I want <laughs> I got up and I just looked at the camera and said exactly the same thing I'm like hey I just, just see that if you're there I just want to pray for you ta -da -da. and so at the end of the service there is a lady who uh she left our church um she didn't uh, really like me and stuff and we'll just leave it at that she might be watching and uh she comes up to me shakes my hand and uh, she really didn't like me and she said I was supposed to come to church today not to hear you but to hear those guys and I was like not surprised and she said but I woke up with a very severe pain I couldn't even move so I was watching from the phone and she says when you said that she says completely my neck is just snapped everything snapped everything was removed she says thank you for being obedient to the Holy Spirit never came again but still it just shows that God can still use people who just like you and I when you fill yourself with Holy Spirit he will lead you leading of the Holy Spirit is the result of life full of the Holy Spirit filling yourself with the Holy Spirit is not Holy Spirit choosing whom to fill it's people in here saying I choose to worship I choose to pray I choose to press in I choose to give I choose to honor God and the Holy Spirit begins to come on your life can somebody say amen can somebody say hallelujah, hallelujah. and lastly is your relationship with the Holy Spirit cannot go further than your trust or your ability to stand on his word remember I said higher if you're obedient further if you can stand on God's Word the Holy Spirit will bring you to a place that only the Holy Scriptures can get you through I mean look at Jesus Jesus gets led by the Holy Spirit and it's it's interesting because where does Jesus get led by the Holy Spirit to crusade in Ethiopia maybe Ghana some kind of a mission trip maybe in Mexico does Jesus get led to pray for a Lazarus to raise him from the dead? Jesus gets led by the Holy Spirit to fast and to literally sacrifice. You will always see this. You can know that it's Holy Spirit if he's leading you to things that are, will cost you of your pride, your selfishness, a little bit of money, a little bit of your ego. It's usually 150% the Holy Spirit. Me and my wife, we have this, you know, kind of saying between us that if it's about giving, it's about 100% God. Because the Holy Spirit, even you say, what if it's not the Holy Spirit? It's still the good thing to do. <laughs> to fast, to give, and to pray. It's still the good thing to do. But the Holy Spirit will lead you to sacrifice. But this is what I want to point on right now. Is Jesus is led to the wilderness. He's sacrificing. He's fasting. And finally, he is hungry. But I want you to see, in 40 days, you don't see mention of the Holy Spirit. 
it's almost like the Holy Spirit abandons Jesus it's almost like the Holy Spirit leaves Jesus and Jesus doesn't get scared Jesus doesn't lose himself Jesus doesn't get you know intimidated by that Jesus doesn't call Johnny and say hey John it's pretty tough in here you want to bring some Jordan River water in here sprinkle me he doesn't call Johnny and say Johnny hey listen just I need a prayer partner I need somebody to hook up with to connect with somebody help me out Jesus in the wilderness doesn't even wait for another feeling of the spirit Jesus in the wilderness takes the word and begins to speak the word let me tell you something a secret the Holy Spirit in your wilderness time hides in his word and he can never be found in your emotions don't even search him for your emotions I'll give you right away what you're gonna find confusion doubt fear every negative thing you'll find in your emotions and he will not be there that's why Paul says in Ephesians 6 on the evil day take up the sword of what of the spirit why because the Holy Spirit on the evil day hides in his word he on the evil day this is where you find the Holy Spirit sometimes on the evil day you won't find him even during worship you won't find him even trying to do the things that you normally do but when you begin to stand on his word stand on what you know next thing that happens is the Holy Spirit's power begins to flow the Holy Spirit's anointing begins to even if it doesn't you'll endure through that wilderness you'll come out not in 40 years but 40 days and you'll come out overcoming and defeating the devil and like Jesus did with the power of the Holy Spirit because somebody say amen. amen you know I had a situation about three and a half or four years ago we were struggling in our church really struggling things were not going so well I was on my way to California and I was listening to a preacher whose mom died and left him with an apartment that was worth ten thousand dollars he decided to he was in a poor country to give that ten thousand dollars so God can give him breakthrough in his ministry so he gave that money and said God I don't need money back I just need revival I just need breakthrough so I was flying to California to a revival center and listening to this message and at the time you know we had two rental properties me and my wife we lived in one rented one property out and at the time we actually had nine thousand dollars we were two months short and we will have ten thousand dollars and I get the idea small still voice just an impression give ten thousand dollars away to the missions and literally ask God to bring revival to your ministry I was like well I can ask God without giving ten thousand dollars <laughs> I can fast for ten days it would be good for my health and, and all the good stuff and I just for three days the thought wouldn't leave me so I came back now up to that point I've never given anything larger than a few hundred dollars so this this is painful because I saved this money for years this is my money <laughs> this was money to build our new home custom built home we were supposed to build in three years I come back home and I say this if I'm gonna present it to my wife and my wife agrees with it then maybe it's from the Lord I present it to my wife before I even finish the sentence she's like yeah let's do it I was like Lord you got to her before me <laughs> this is not fair we fly to another country we find this particular ministry that works in missions we brought ten thousand dollars and I remember it like yesterday we asked him for one thing I said I don't want money back I don't want the car I don't want the house literally my dom na nebesach right now <laughs> I'm giving up the idea of building a home I'm just asking for one thing preacher I asked that missionary that pastor and I said please pray for me I just want to see every youth service at least one person saved that's all I want came back home literally we arrived home excited pumped and uh, the Lord places on both of our hearts to take one year off and not save any money but to give each month all our savings away we were able to scrape about a thousand dollars each month and to begin to faithfully give each month all of our savings away there's a crazy part my rental properties that I had I couldn't rent them out in Tri Cities 98% of all the rental properties were rented out except mine so I remodeled it found some money remodeled the property one month usually it takes me two days and it gets rent out three days max I lowered the price by a hundred dollars literally 
couldn't rent it out first month and I made a promise to God to give. The second month, somebody by Facebook sent me a thousand dollars section. They didn't even know me. So it was praise God. I've kept my vow to God. I gave to the Lord. Gave that, that money away. The third month, I can't find rent and I gave a promise to give a thousand dollars thinking I'll have rent and I don't have rent and I don't have the thousand dollars. I remember this like yesterday. I was standing at Walmart because I would wire the money through one of their little systems. And I was like fifth in line. And there I am standing with this money that I had to believe and pray for to get. And I'm fifth in line. And I'm remembering doubts because in these four months, not only our ministry didn't change, nothing changed. The only thing that changed is I'm broke. <laughs> and now in Walmart, confused. I'm starting to doubt whether I heard God. What if I'm just making this up? What if I'm going crazy? What if I'm approaching 30 and just, just losing my mind? What if maybe it's my time to quit? I need this thousand dollars more than God and these missionaries that are over there. If God has called me to do, why is he, why is he literally backing me into the corner, making things worse than before, at least before I could find rent. Now I don't have rent. But I remembered why I did what I did. I wanted to see breakthrough. And there in Walmart, fifth, then became fourth. And I told God, I said, God, even if I didn't hear you, I'll be a fool who took a risk for you. But if I heard you, God, I just don't want to live without people coming to know Jesus. Even if I don't find rent for the rest of my life, God, I'll sell that duplex. But I'm not going to give up. The moment I did that, in the fourth month, we found rent. About fifth month, I remember when the first person that got saved that's now married to my cousin. Two weeks later, new people came. Two weeks later, new people came. And then it started to happen for about two and a half years where almost not one service, somebody wasn't getting saved. Our church a youth group at the time grew from 50 and maybe for some of you numbers mean nothing but you have to understand for 15 years we couldn't break 50. 50 was like 55 breakthrough, 60 was revival and that's it and back to 50. 55 and 60 no matter what we've done and trust me we've done a lot of things that were wrong, illegal and maybe unscriptural and still nothing was working but this time we started to see we did nothing different but I started to see the grace of God. People started to come. We started to see 70 people, 100 people. I remember when 100 people came on a normal youth service for no reason. It was incredible. Then 150, then 200, then 220 where there was no more parking lot and the rumors start going around in town. You make sure you come early. Why? Because there's no spots there. The crazy part is that the money that we gave so that we don't have to build a house. Four months later after we gave that my, fa my father finds a land close to church and he says, Vlad, you need to buy the land. I was like, dad, I would love to but not in this lifetime. I'm like it's not happening anytime soon. Not only I'm broke but I'm gonna be broke for the rest of my two, two three years at least. And my dad says I'll borrow you money. He borrows me money. We build a house very quickly in four months. Get a construction loan that's very small and I had this secret goal. I said God I want the construction loan to cover the house which we had to squeeze things in and I want to have money in this loan to pay off my dad without going into any debt. And you won't believe it on the end of that thing to the dollar there was enough money in the construction loan i had my contractor main contractor recount things three times because he says that's not possible he says you usually have to put money out of the pocket he says something went wrong i was like well it's your job to find it he couldn't find anything bank couldn't find it there was extra money there that went to my dad i moved to my new place and got literally changed my finances changed my life but he first tested me he will test you also. Don't be afraid of that. But in that moment, you can't rely on your feelings. You got to rely on the Word of God. Can somebody say amen? amen? Joseph was in a dry pit. Daniel was in the lion's den. Three Hebrew boys were in the furnace of fire. Jeremiah was in also a pit. Lazarus was in the tomb. Paul and Silas was in the prison. But I want you to watch this. Joseph didn't stay in the dry pit. Jeremiah didn't stay in a dry pit. 
Daniel did not stay in the da Daniel's in the lion's den and three Hebrew boys did not die in the furnace Lazarus didn't stay in the tomb and Jesus didn't stay in the tomb whatever you're going through right now I want to tell you something if the Holy Spirit is with you I have a word for you you are not gonna stay there forever there is gonna be a time half of you didn't get it so I'm going after you there will be a time but and it's honestly it will be just one day nothing will be different about day be just one day and things will shift and things will change and you will recognize people around you will recognize your life has changed because the Holy Spirit changes seasons when we are faithful in our wilderness can somebody say amen I want you to rise to your feet thank you for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come